So, hello everyone, welcome to this video. Uh, in this video today we will talk about uh, Dependency Monkey and uh, this video is uh, from series How to Beat Python's Pip and uh, more precisely we will talk about Dependency Monkey and how Dependency Monkey is checking Python dependencies of a TensorFlow stack. So, uh, if we take a look at TensorFlow, we can pick one uh, specific version to simplify things a bit. Uh, then uh, we can uh, have TensorFlow in version 2.1.0 installed from uh, the PyPI, the Python package index, and we can see 23 dependencies. Uh, these uh, 23 dependencies are uh, in a form of uh, dependency name and version range specification that needs to be satisfied in order to uh, uh, install TensorFlow. You can also see uh, some environment markers. That means that these dependencies can be installed conditionally, uh, for example, based on Python interpreter version. Okay, so we have these 23 dependencies. Uh, let's uh, create a dependency graph. Uh, in this case, uh, we have just one, uh, let's say, direct dependency that is uh, TensorFlow uh, in the uh, specific version that we mentioned, and uh, these 23 uh, direct dependencies that we saw uh, earlier. Uh, we can create a node uh, in this uh, dependency graph that directly corresponds to uh, dependency name and version range specification uh, that needs to be satisfied for all the dependencies in the dependency graph uh, when installed a uh, specific uh, package. So this version range specification is resolved uh, based on resolver and uh, that basically checks uh, what uh, dependencies are available, uh, for example, on PyPI on any, or any other uh, Python package index. And uh, I did that. So uh, for example, if we take a look at ABSLPy, uh, we can see some uh, additional nodes uh, that correspond directly to specific versions that satisfy the version range specification for ABSLPy as mentioned in uh, TensorFlow uh, dependency listing. The same can be uh, applied for other dependencies, uh, basically for all these 23 direct dependencies of uh, TensorFlow. Okay, um, these are just direct dependencies. And to inspect the wall dependency graph, we need to take a look also at um, uh, transitive dependencies of uh, TensorFlow, meaning uh, dependencies of uh, direct dependencies. Uh, I uh, checked uh, just a few. Uh, I provided a link to uh, a, a GitHub uh, repository where uh, there is stated uh, the wall uh, dependency graph in case you are interested. And here you can see uh, that, uh, for example, at opt -Ainzum, uh depends on uh, NumPy, uh, SciPy also depends on NumPy, but uh, different version range specifications uh, in comparison uh, to uh, the dependency that is uh, stated for uh, uh, TensorFlow uh, in version 2.1.0. Uh, uh, which version of NumPy is installed? Well, that depends on the uh, actual resolution process. Uh, if we install these dependencies using pip, pipen, poentry, then the latest uh, possible NumPy will be picked. Uh, if we uh, create some smarter picking, like which NumPy versions uh, work uh, very well with our TensorFlow release, uh, then we can uh, gain some uh, uh, higher quality software in comparison to the software that uh, has, uh, let's say, latest but not greatest uh, uh, dependencies. Uh, this, uh, which which uh, NumPy dependencies will be, or uh, which NumPy version will be installed, that also uh, depends on other packages that you have inside your uh, dependency uh, listing. If you are using TensorFlow as a library in your application, you can use, uh, for example, different version of SciPy or uh, something else uh, that includes a different version of uh, NumPy, and then the resolution process can create uh, a software stack uh, that is um, formed with a uh, different NumPy version uh, than uh, stated here. Also, uh, this depends on time, 
like when you install or when you resolve dependencies, uh, then uh, depends on uh, which versions of NumPy uh, can uh, end in your uh, software. Okay, and this all can be applied also to other direct dependencies. So uh, let's uh, take a look at it. Uh, if we uh, check TensorFlow 2.1.0 uh, as a wall, we can see NumPy, uh, that is a uh, dependency of uh, H5Pi, OptAinZoom, SciPy, Keras Processing, TensorBoard, and uh, possibly others. But I think I stated uh, all. You can find uh, the listing in the uh, GitHub gist. And if you take a look at uh, direct dependencies of TensorFlow, we can construct something like three to the uh, three multiplied by ten to, to the power of thirteen possible combinations of uh, packages in different versions that can be installed. Of course, this version uh, varies uh, based on uh, the actual resolution process. And uh, if you include also transitive dependencies, that things get more complicated. Uh, so. Uh, you can see that NumPy is introduced into TensorFlow stack by different, uh, different dependencies, uh, either direct or uh, transitive ones. And if there is any issue in NumPy, NumPy then uh, uh, there can be uh, some effect or uh, some bug in the, in the software and uh, you can break the application, it can misbehave, and the, the overall quality of software that is shipped is, um, uh, let's say, degraded. Or if you uh, install proper version of NumPy, then uh, the uh, quality can grow. Uh, we can also touch overpinning, underpinning uh, in these cases, uh, but that's a different story. Uh, we will talk about it in the upcoming articles. Uh, if we take a look at the TensorFlow dependency graph and check how many nodes are there, you can find something like 17 uh, million uh, nodes in the dependency graph. And this number can uh, grow over time. So you can, uh, there are uh, new releases of NumPy that can satisfy version range specifications uh, in, the, in the dependency graph. And in that case, uh, dependency graph uh, uh, grows. It's worth to mention here that uh, this number corresponds to a no uh, number of uh, packages in specific versions coming from a specific uh, Python package index. So uh, it's, for example, a node in this dependency graph. Uh, in this case, it's NumPy in version 1.7 uh, coming from uh, the Python package index. So you can see that's pretty huge uh, dependency graph. Uh, if we go more into the theoretical uh, direction, let's say that we have an application that depends on two packages. One is uh, called SimpleLib and the other one is AnotherLib. We consider these dependencies uh, as uh, direct dependencies of our application. And also these uh, dependencies do not have any transitive dependencies uh, of, uh, uh, that, that would be introduced into the software stack. Um, then we can we can explore the state space that is created out of these two libraries. So let's say we have uh, SimpleLib and Underlib, and we are just uh, checking uh, combinations of different versions for SimpleLib and uh, and Underlib. Then we create some scoring function uh, that uh, will uh, explore how the uh, software behaves when it comes to its quality. You can imagine uh, quality being uh, how uh, performant the software is, uh, does it break or anything like that. Uh, this is just a brief uh, introduction and uh, you can find more, uh, more information in the linked uh, article. Uh, this is just to give context uh, what we are doing with uh, Dependency Monkey. So as stated, we have simple leap and other leap, and we have some scoring function that tells us how good the software is when we change versions of simple leap and another leap. Uh, we are in a discrete unit space, and here you can see these purple dots that uh, correspond to the final score that is computed by the scoring function. It's not that intuitive, so let's try to interpolate this function. And in this case, uh, we get this uh, surface uh, that corresponds to the interpolated uh, uh, 
discrete function uh, for uh, scoring these uh, combinations. And as you can see uh, in this artificial example, uh, our software can have different, uh, different aspects, different uh, quality, uh, depending on uh, versions that we installed. Okay, now let's say that we pin simply to some specific version and what we will do, we will change some versions of another lib or we will change uh, or we will check what versions of another lib can be installed. In that case, uh, we are basically mapping uh, these to a two-dimensional space where uh, X axis uh, corresponds to uh, versions of another lib and Y axis is the score. Uh, this function tells us uh, how the software behaves when we have simple libs in a specific version and we are changing uh, another lib, uh, we are changing uh, these versions or possibly, for example, builds of uh, another lib. Then this scoring function can uh, look like this as an example. Okay, this was a more theoretical background and let's take a look um, at a resolution process that can create different combinations and satisfy uh, version range specification and resolve uh, dependencies considering the dependency graph. So our ultimate goal will be to resolve TensorFlow software stacks with different NumPy versions, but still respecting version range specifications on uh, NumPy, so we still satisfy uh, uh, version range specifications that are put by different uh, libraries such as uh, uh, TensorFlow, uh, SciPy and others that use NumPy. So we will create a reconfigurable resolver. This uh, resolver is created of pipeline units and these pipeline units uh, basically form a programmable interface to the resolver and uh, you can think of a pipeline unit being something like do not uh, submit already or do not uh, uh, check already seen uh, software stack. So if we resolve some software stack multiple times, that can happen based on the dependency uh, graph resolution, consider just uh, first, uh, first uh, resolution and uh, do not uh, create multiple duplicates. Then another pipeline unit can be in all versions except for some specific uh, uh, library. In this case, it will be NumPy. We can do this, do this also on uh, the direct dependencies, but in that case, we are directly saying that uh, these dependencies have to be present in the dependency graph, but that's not something that needs to be true. Like if we pin, uh, for example, uh, TensorBoard uh, in a specific version uh, inside TensorFlow stack, for all the releases of uh, TensorFlow, uh, TensorBoard does not need to be uh, present in the dependency graph, meaning the dependency graph can look like different because there are not restrictions or version range specifications that would be introduced by uh, TensorFlow package. And you can think of uh, any other uh, pipeline units. Uh, these units are basically uh, some uh, programmable interface and they do one thing uh, and they do it well. And uh, when grouped uh, into a pipeline configuration, then the pipeline can resolve software specs that have different, uh, that have certain aspects and uh, uh, are uh, suitable for our needs uh, based on what we want to see. So, for example, we want to see different versions of NumPy in a TensorFlow stack. Okay, uh, if we take a look at dependency monkey as a component, uh, we already know uh, the pipeline, so uh, in green, uh, these green uh, rectangles are uh, pipeline units, they are grouped into a pipeline configuration and this uh, pipeline configuration is used by dependency monkey and uh, a resolver that can resolve software specs that are uh, respecting uh, Python uh, packaging requirements or Python packaging uh, guidelines and uh, can resolve pit, uh, pinned down uh, software specs uh, with certain aspect, with certain quality. The input to uh, dependency monkey is a vector, 
Uh, this vector can be uh, formed out of uh, direct dependencies. These are required, so uh, stating uh, what needs to be resolved. In our case, it will be TensorFlow in version 2.1.0. Uh, then information about software uh, environment and hardware environment, meaning where the software will be run, on uh, which operating system, on which hardware, uh, what CPU, all these things uh, that we want to uh, uh, consider uh, when we want to run some specific uh, uh, jobs that uh, verify uh, quality of software. Uh, the other another input can be uh, library usage. In other words, API calls to different uh, uh, libraries uh, like TensorFlow. So if you are using convolutional neural network or convolutional layer, uh, you can form or act differently uh, in uh, pipeline configuration or pipeline units. And then there is another parameter that is uh, decision type that also parameterizes. Uh, uh, dependency monkey in some way. We will not go into uh, details. Then uh, all these uh, things in the input ve vector are taken. Uh, create, uh, the pipeline configuration is created. This pipeline unit can have uh, parameters uh, that state how these pipeline units can act. And the resolver and dependency monkey itself uses knowledge base uh, to resolve software stacks. So one of uh, knowledge that it uses is uh, how uh, dependencies are structured. So uh, if you are following our, our series, you know uh, that uh, Python dependencies can be resolved uh, using uh, solver. And it's, uh, it basically states uh, what dependencies uh, correspond to which version or in specifications of packages. So that's one of uh, the knowledge that uh, we have and is required to actually resolve software stacks. Another knowledge can be uh, information for pipeline units. So pipeline units can act differently. Uh, so if we do not want to uh, uh, resolve uh, same software stacks across multiple dependency monkey runs, uh, we can code it in, into a pipeline unit that will query the knowledge base and ask for already seen uh, software stacks in the previous runs. So we do not need to uh, inspect or check uh, or resolve software stacks multiple times and uh, things like that. Uh, dependence monkey is a component uh, that is living inside a cluster, so it can be run inside a cluster. In that case, the interface uh, to trigger a dependence monkey run is an API server, so you can directly go to an API endpoint, uh, uh, pass in all the, all the parameters, and uh, dependency monkey uh, will be run. That's just another interface. Uh, in the demo that I will uh, do, uh, there, uh, there will be used dependency monkey locally, so it will be run from uh, command line, but that's just another interface uh, uh, how to interact with uh, dependency monkey. Once dependency monkey resolves software stacks, the software stacks are sent to Amun uh, to check inspection, uh, to run inspections, and these inspections uh, verify software stack quality. So if you are following our articles, you know that uh, these inspections uh, check uh, how uh, the application uh, behaves when there is a uh, metrics multiplication done, what is uh, the overall uh, uh, performance, or uh, how the application behaves when uh, convolutional uh, layers are created, or it can be uh, done on model uh, level, uh, not on uh, ops level, on operation. Uh, level. So uh, Amun uh, creates inspections and these inspections create uh, uh, or the output of inspections is a, a document uh, which uh, can be subsequently reviewed, uh, how the software behaves, uh, what, were there any uh, build failures, uh, what the, were there any uh, runtime failures and based on uh, this review, create again a knowledge for dependency monkey and later for uh, resolving uh, high quality software as we will talk in the upcoming uh, articles. Okay, so uh, let's dive into a demo. And we have switched to terminal. As stated in the presentation, terminal is just one interface how to interact with dependency monkey. Uh, I will type directly commands uh, 
to interact with dependency monkey, but uh, this all can be accomplished also inside the cluster where uh, API endpoints would be used and these API endpoints accept JSON, JSON and uh, that uh, JSON is subsequently uh, transformed to parameters uh, uh, that are used by dependency monkey. Okay, so uh, let's take a look at first command that we will uh, trigger. So in this case, uh, we will run a dependency monkey. The implementation lives in TOTS advisor because it's reusing a resolver that is uh, used in advises. Uh, we will uh, talk about this in upcoming, uh, upcoming articles. Dependency monkey accepts a pip file. Uh, so if you take a look at pip file, it's standard pip file as produced by pipenv. Uh, you can see that uh, we uh, are requesting TensorFlow in version 2.1.0 running Python 3.6. So that's pip file. Uh, then there is a recommendation type. Uh, again, I'm not going uh, into details, uh, but uh, that's just another parameter that is passed to uh, advisor. Uh, then we are using predict, uh, predictor. Uh, this predictor guides uh, resolver how to resolve uh, dependencies inside the dependency graph. So package combinations is one uh, implementation of predictor. This predictor accepts uh, parameters. Uh, if you take a look at uh, these parameters, uh, they state uh, what package combinations should be uh, uh, resolved. So in this case, we are resolving uh, TensorFlow in version 2.1.0 with different combinations of NumPy. Then another parameter is a count that says how many software stacks we want to resolve. Um, then uh, another uh, parameter is called Amun context. If you take a look at it, it's uh, the JSON file that is sent to Amun. Uh, this is uh, used uh, to describe how the runtime and build time environment should look like and how the build process should look like. It also states a script that will be used to uh, to verify that uh, the application uh, runs correctly. In this case, we are using UBI 8, Python 3.6, that is uh, compatible with RHEL 8, Python 3.6. Uh, you can see uh, run requests and build requests. So uh, that's uh, about Amun context. Another parameter is seed. Uh, this Seed uh, is initializing random generator, uh, so dependency monkey can uh, uh, run in a completely random manner. Or if you explicitly say uh, seed, then the uh, random generator is uh, initialized, so uh, multiple dependency monkey runs uh, produce the same results. So I put it uh, in there uh, just to have uh, similar output uh, across multiple runs. Then uh, another parameter is runtime environment. Uh, let's take a look at it. So runtime environment states uh, for resolver that we are using RHEL uh, in version eight, uh, running Python 3.6 and platform is x86.64, uh, uh, so uh, Linux. Uh, this is input to resolver as uh, dependencies that are installed can depend on the environment when we are running Python 3.6, uh, we can end up in, with different uh, dependencies that are installed uh, given uh, environment markers that are supplied uh, to packages uh, in various parts of the dependency graph. So uh, this uh, needs to be done. Okay, uh, then we have uh, pipeline configuration. So let's take a look at it. Uh, it states what pipeline units should be present inside uh, pipeline configuration. Uh, the implementation of uh, advisor uh, implements multiple pipeline units, and these pipeline units can be of different types. For example, boots, thieves, uh, steps, strides, uh, and uh, wraps. Uh, they serve uh, their own purpose, and we will talk about them in the upcoming videos. So uh, for us, the most interesting uh, ones are strides. So here you can see uh, multiple strides uh, called one version stride, and they uh, limit that uh, each package should uh, be present in a specific uh, 
version or in one version that is resolved. So uh, in this case, uh, we have ABSL Pi, uh, GAST, Google Pasta, and all these packages uh, in one specific version. And then uh, I commented out uh, one uh, pipeline unit that uh, says uh, one version of NumPy. Uh, that's something we don't want. Uh, we want uh, to resolve multiple versions of uh, NumPy, so multiple uh, combinations that can occur inside a TensorFlow stack. Okay, so uh, this is pipeline configuration. Let's take a look at what we have. Uh, another parameter, uh, report output, that just uh, says where uh, where the report of dependency monkey run should be stored. So it's a JSON file that uh, captures all the relevant inputs and the outputs produced by dependency monkey. And then uh, there is uh, output. Uh, in the first run, we will use output directory. In the second run, uh, we will submit uh, this first text to Amun. Uh, so Amun really builds them and uh, verifies that they are running correctly. Refer to the previous article from uh, Python Beats, uh, Pyth how to beat Python's pip uh, series uh, to get more information about this. Okay, so let's try to run this command. Uh, and what we should see, uh, we should see uh, the dependency monkey starts and it starts uh, resolving uh, TensorFlow stacks. As you can see, there were produced uh, 10 uh, stacks uh, in six seconds, something more than six seconds. And uh, these results were stored inside output directory. So uh, let's take a look at them. Uh, these outputs are uh, pip file log files, so uh, standard uh, pipenv files. And as you can see, uh, they differ. Um, with a uh, uh, NumPy version. Uh, this is all considering the dependency graph and version range specification uh, as uh, stated for all the dependencies uh, inside uh, TensorFlow stack. So for example, uh, that uh, SciPy, uh, TensorFlow, and all these uh, that were stated in the uh, presentation. Okay, so now let's try to submit them to Amun. So we will remove comment it out uh, URL to service and uh, let's run it. Uh, as you will see, uh, it will be slightly slower because there is uh, networking overhead. But if we take a look at it, uh, we should see in Argo workflows new inspections uh, that are running. So each inspection uh, creates uh, image stream, uh, then uh, creates build config, uh, build, so the application is built inside an OpenShift cluster, and subsequently uh, uh, there are run inspection jobs that verify that the application runs correctly. Uh, so again, refer to the last article uh, about Amun to get more info about this. Okay, so uh, that would be the first command that we uh, run, our first uh, run of uh, dependency monkey. And now let's take a look at uh, the second command that we will take a look at. So again, we are running dependency monkey uh, with the uh, same pip file, with the same decision type, but we switched predictor to random walk. This predictor can randomly walk the dependency graph and randomly resolve some software stacks uh, that are valid TensorFlow uh, software stacks. We will uh, produce 500 software stacks. We will use same uh, configuration for Amun, uh, same seed for the resolver and the uh, uh, random generator, uh, same, same runtime environment, same report output, and uh, we will adjust pipeline configuration. So if you recall, uh, we had specific uh, wraps uh, Sorry, strides uh, that removed um, or prevented from uh, creating different combinations of packages that we didn't want. In this case, uh, we uh, removed them, so uh, we are not limiting to some specific combination of packages. Okay, so let's give it a try. Again, first we will run it, uh, store results inside an output directory that is called out2. 
And uh, in a second, we should be able to see uh, that the first texts are resolved. As you can see, they are resolved much faster because uh, the resolver uses uh, pre-computed information about dependency and dependency graph. Uh, this was already mentioned in uh, one of uh, articles uh, from previous uh, how to beat Python's pip uh, series. Okay, uh, so as you can see, we generated 500 uh, TensorFlow software stacks uh, in uh, 30 seconds. That uh, is something like, uh, sorry, in 16 seconds, and that's something like 30 seconds, uh, 30 stacks per second. As done before, uh, again, we can submit uh, this uh, dependency monkey. Uh, run to uh, Amun. So Amun again uh, verifies that uh, randomly uh, sampled uh, software stacks of TensorFlow built correctly and that they run correctly. So uh, we can uh, do that. Uh, again, it will be slightly slower because uh, there's networking overhead to submit uh, these results. And uh, as you will see inside Argo workflows, or uh, Argo workflow, there are created new ones. So why do we do this? Uh, we basically randomly sample the state space of all the possible TensorFlow software stacks that can be resolved. And by doing so, we can spot issues uh, that can occur when uh, resolving uh, some packages inside the dependency graph. So uh, an example uh, can be resolution process when you install TensorFlow together with other packages like uh, Flask. Uh, so Flask introduces its own uh, dependencies that can be shared with dependencies of TensorFlow and they can affect uh, how the resolution process looks like and how the resulting uh, software stack uh, looks like, meaning uh, different versions of packages. Okay, so uh, by doing this random sampling, we found uh, issues. An example can be uh, an issue in TensorFlow 2.1 uh, when specific URL lib was installed together with TensorFlow 2.1. Then uh, we got uh, this import error when we were trying to import TensorFlow. So here we can see we tried to import TensorFlow but uh, we observed import error when uh, there was import range from uh, package six. Uh, this issue was caused by uh, bundled uh, six that is shipped uh, together with URL, URL lib three and the initi initialization of uh, the importing logic uh, in URL, URL lib three uh, co collided with uh, uh, six package imports. So uh, we observed this import error. That means uh, that uh, TensorFlow, when installed with this URL, will never work, will never start. So this is um, uh, one observation that we have. You can find all the files uh, on GitHub that are used in this uh, demo and in this presentation. I will link uh, them in the description down below. So that was our demo. I hope you liked it. Uh, everything you saw uh, is made uh, in a project that is called Project TOT. Uh, project TOT is a project in AICOE, AI Center of Excellence, that is a team inside office of the CTO, the Red Hat's office of the CTO. You can find us uh, on homepage uh, .station.ninja. Uh, all the source code lives inside a GitHub organization that is called TotStation. We have also a Twitter handle, so if you are uh, interested in updates, uh, any progress we make, or uh, any, any quality that we uh, conduct, uh, feel free uh, to subscribe to our uh, Twitter handle. And we have also YouTube channel, so uh, this, uh, that's the YouTube channel where this video is published. So feel free to click on the link and uh, feel free to subscribe to uh, be updated when we have anything new. Uh, this way I would like to thank you for uh, your attention and uh, I hope we will see 
uh, each other uh, next time in the upcoming uh, articles uh, about Project Todd and uh, about uh, how to beat Python's pip uh, articles. Uh, so thank you and have a nice day.